So, I went into this game kind of on a whim. I didn't watch any reviews or previews, so I honestly had no real expectations. In fact, the last I heard anything about Diablo Immortals, it was still a mobile-only game. Anyways, if this game didn't release on PC, I wouldn't have tried it. I am not a big mobile game fan, which may have been for the best considering the title of this video. Now, the gameplay for this, it's okay. For a game designed for mobile devices that was what seems to be pretty hastily ported to PC, it plays just fine. I just don't know why anyone on PC would choose to play this over, oh, I don't know, Lost Ark or Path of Exile, but that's neither here nor there. The gameplay is not the reason this game is so bad. It's the way Blizzard are monetizing it, and just how ridiculously pay to win it is. So, what Blizzard did was, instead of taking the best that free-to-play games have to offer, and giving players what could have been a great free-to-play experience, they took the worst of free-to-play games, and just put it all into one place. What really stings about this is, it's not just some random free-to-play game, it's Diablo. This is a big IP that many gamers enjoy, so to see it treated this way, well, it really sucks. The other thing to consider is Diablo Immortals is just beyond shameless. Before you even log into the game, the splash screen on the battle net reminds you, oh, don't forget, there is a cash shop. You log in, you are reminded of the cash shop in your alerts. The cash shop is just constantly being shoved down your throat. So let's take a look at this cash shop, what it's monetizing, why it's so gross, and predatory, and manipulative. First of all, there is a paid version of the Battle Pass that you can purchase for $5. The paid Battle Pass gives much better rewards than the free one, so yeah, that's pay to win, right? If you are using the free Battle Pass, you will fall behind. But wait, there's more, because you can also get an Empowered Battle Pass, which costs $15. It's basically the same as the $5 one, in terms of what you get along the path, but they give you some cosmetics for buying it, and you skip 13 levels. The $5 Battle Pass was already pay to win, and this one just doubles down on that. The worst part about these Battle Passes is, if you don't finish them by the end of the season, all the rewards you didn't claim are lost. How despicable is that, especially if you paid for it? Just a way to force players into playing every single day. Now, believe it or not, they also offer a subscription as well. Now, why would you sub to this game? A free-to-play game? Well, it gives you high-quality login rewards for 30 days, on top of the normal login rewards. Also, while the sub is active, they give you extra inventory space. Which, as you may know, in a loot pinata game, that is a huge quality of life improvement that Blizzard are forcing you to pay for. They also give you remote market access and market trade slots. Now keep in mind, the login bonuses need to be claimed every single day. If you don't log in for a day, you lose out on that reward. Just another way to make sure players are logging in every single day. They also have chests, called bundles here, and they have three types with up to 800% value. And what a steal, two of them cost only a dollar! Or you could really splurge for the two dollar one. Anyways, the chests may seem innocuous enough, but the way I see it is, it's a way to get the players used to buying stuff. Also, the chests give you a taste of just how useful some of the items are that you can, to the surprise of no one, buy separately in the cash shop. Uh, just an editor's note here, I didn't realize this until putting the video together, but there are special bundles you can buy as well, that are very expensive in comparison. $26 for the cheapest one, and $100 for the most expensive one. So yeah, wow, I can't even with that. Anyways, that's all I had to say here, back to the video. Now, until this point, everything has been purchasable for real money. That is to say, you didn't need to convert real money into the special in-game currency. That is what we will look at right now. So, why do these games do that? Why force the player to convert their money into some fake currency? Orbs, in Diablo's case. Well, it's because they want to control how much currency you have, while obfuscating how much you are really spending. If you look at the orbs that you can buy, the first thing you might notice is that the set of 60 orbs, which cost a dollar, is completely useless. 
because nothing in the shop costs 60 orbs. What most players are going to want with the orbs is something known as the Legendary Crest, and they cost 160 orbs. So you would need to buy the 60 orb set three times, or, you know, you could get the next closest price point, which is 499, and that will give you 300 orbs plus an extra 5%, so 315 in total. The second thing you might notice is that they meticulously design the amount of orbs you get per price point, so that you will almost always have leftover orbs. Now, I say almost, because if you get the ridiculously priced $100 bundle, it comes with 7200 orbs, and you could spend all that on materials, since they cost 100 orbs. Now, I have no idea why anyone would do this, but you could. There is also a cosmetic item that costs 1650 orbs, and you could buy exactly that for $25. This is diabolical, because outside of the cases I just mentioned, you will always have orbs left over. This is just a way to manipulate players into buying more orbs, since they already have some bank. Anyways, I mentioned it earlier, but legendary crests are what most players will spend their orbs on. And these are the big pay-to-win item that gets you legendary gems. These crests are kind of the loot boxes of Diablo Immortal, but they are done in such a way that it's far more obfuscated. Basically, you slot in the legendary crest whenever you run a rift, and this will guarantee that you get a legendary gem of varying quality at the end of the rift inside of your chest. So unlike most game loot boxes which just give you the reward right away, in Diablo Immortal you have to run a rift to get your reward. Anyways, these legendary crests cost 160 orbs for 1, and 1600 orbs for 10. Or in other words, around $3 to buy just 1, or around $25 to buy 10. That just seems like a lot of money, especially when you consider this. The legendary gems have multiple rarities, all the way up to a 5 star rating. Now, the odds of getting a 5 star gem are very low, at 4.5%. You might notice a question mark out of 5 there, and that is because 5 star gems can fall anywhere between the ranges of 2 out of 5, all the way up to 5 out of 5. Now, of course you're going to want the 5 out of 5 gems, which have an absurdly low drop rate of 1%, and when you think about the fact that you only have a 4.5% chance that the gem will be of a 5 star quality, this is very, very unlikely. Now, you could upgrade a 2 out of 5 gem all the way to a 5 out of 5 gem, but that won't be cheap. No matter how you try to slice it, getting those 5 out of 5 gems is going to be time consuming and expensive. And when you think about how many of these gems you will need to fill out all of your equipment, you can easily see how this can become insanely expensive. And the odds are not in your favor. But hey, after doing 50 Legendary Crests, you do get a pity question mark at a 5 star rated gem, and it would only cost you around $120 to get to that point. Now, of course you could get the Legendary Crests through playing the game normally, you don't have to spend money on them, but it would take a very, very long time. I read that it could take years of farming if you wanted to do it without paying anything, and by years, the number floating around was about and if you think that number is bad, if you wanted to buy your way to the best possible character, the number floating around for that was upwards of $110,000. Now, obviously most players will never spend that kind of money in game, but the system is still designed to manipulate players into spending money. It relies on the sunk cost fallacy, where if a player drops $25 into 10 legendary crests and they don't get a single thing they are looking for, there's a very good chance that they will drop another $25, and then another $25, until they do get what they are looking for. You saw the odds, they are not good. So, in conclusion, all of these decisions for the cash shop make it so that I cannot justify playing this game. It's just such a despicable display of pay to win and predatory cash shop antics that it just makes me physically ill. And the reviews are in. The consensus is very negative, but something tells me that Blizzard doesn't really care about what we think, so long as they are making money hand over fist. 
Even if this means that their name may be getting irreparably tarnished in the process. Not that it was in a great place to begin with. It's a shame, really. Blizzard could have put out a solid free-to-play game that didn't actively try to nickel and dime players. That didn't have such disgusting displays of pay to win. But they didn't. They made a game that is one of the worst I've ever seen in those regards. And you hate to see it, but I guess the way it turned out wasn't all that surprising. Let me know what you all think in the comments below. Anywho, that's all for today. If you liked what you saw, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thanks again and take care.